As we already know, the Media Hub is where we can import our media into our current project. But the Media Hub also allows you to control many different aspects of the media during the import process. So let's return back to the Media Hub by clicking on the Media Hub tab along the bottom of the UI. And I'll use a bookmark to navigate to where I have several files. We already know that double clicking on the file will bring up our preview window where we will see a clip information tab and a metadata tab to give us information about the selected media. With this clip selected, we see that the format is QuickTime, it is a 1080 HD file at 8-bit at 29.97 frames per second. If needed, during the import process, you can change any of these settings. Looking down at the bottom of the UI for the Media Hub, we have several different tabs to control and change different aspects during the import process. On the General tab, you'll see there is a Resolution option, and by default it is Same as Source, which means the resolution of the imported file will match its default information in the header of the file. If you need to change it, just click on the flyout and you'll see all the possible default settings, including a custom option if needed. Let's say I needed this to be a 720HD file. I choose that, you'll see I get all the parameters and options to control the resolution of this file as it's imported. Notice also inside the clip info, the information is changed to correspond with my adjustment made on the general tab. As I said before, if you want the file to take the default resolution of the file, the native file, choose same as source. And no conversion will be made. On the general tab, you also have the option to adjust the bit depth of the file prior to import and your scan mode. Both of them also have the option from source, just as the resolution does. You can also apply a LUT to a file during the import process if needed and choose what type of LUT you want to use. If we go to the Format Specific option tab, on here we're going to have different options that are relevant to the file format that is being selected. By default, Smoke will recognize the format that you've selected and give you the specific options relevant to that file format. Under the name QuickTime, you'll see where it reads metadata. If I click on this, I get three different options for this specific format, metadata, clip option, and image. At the metadata level, you'll see I have an option to change the tape name based upon the header, the directory, the file name, or I can enter the name manually. I also have the time code selection. It's set to auto rate by default, which means we're going to take the frame rate based on the original file. If I click on Auto Rate, I can switch to Select Rate, where I now manually can change what frame rate the file will be imported in, and I can determine if the Drop Frame option will be enabled. If I return this to Auto Rate, the default frame rate of the selected file will be used. If you want to access and see all the formats that are available to be imported into Smoke, you can enable this option called Show All Formats. You'll notice where it reads QuickTime now became a pop-up. If I click on it, I can access any one of the many file formats that can be brought into Smoke, and then I can set up the format-specific options for that specific format. But as I said earlier, Smoke will recognize the file format as you select it if needed. So I'll disable Show All Formats, and I'll use a bookmark to navigate to where I have some red files. With a red file selected, in our clip info, you can see the resolution, the frame rate, and all the other metadata available to us from the red file. Again, notice in the format list, it reads R3D. Smoke knows this is a red file, and if you look, I now have different options available to me for metadata. The tape name options remain the same as they were for the QuickTime, but now I have new options relevant to red files, such as the flip setting and the time code selection. In the flyout that reads metadata now, I also have options for the, the bearing and the color. I switch to color, I now get the color science options, and I get the HDRX settings. And depending upon what color settings I choose, I will receive other options relevant to that color science that I've chosen. Switching over to the bearing setting, we can see here I can change the bearing settings from 16th all the way up to full. And I can also change the bit depth settings. No matter what file format you are choosing, you can save and load these settings to be reused and repurposed in other projects. So as we can see, the Media Hub is an extremely powerful media management tool, not only for accessing and importing your files, but controlling them during the import process.
And remember, you can always drag and drop from the Finder if you want to. And when you do, the options you have set up inside of your Media Hub will still be respected even though you are dragging from the Finder. Once you have all your media imported based on the general settings and your format specific options, it's time to go to the timeline and start doing your editing.